consumer and property stocks is rising. Fund managers that we've been speaking to say that they're buying on prospects that the country will be lifted to investment grade. And joining us uh, from Singapore is uh, Jose Antonio, CEO and founder of Philippines Listed Century Properties, which owns several luxury real estate developments. Thanks for joining us, um, uh, Jose. Thanks. Uh, 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 now, what would an investment grade for the Philippines mean for your business? Uh, it will mean that uh, the Philippines as a whole will have a, a lower borrowing rates um, in the market. And it will also mean that the Philippine individual stocks will probably be upgraded in the portfolio of the various funds that are investing in the Philippine stock market today. Okay, but what about what you do, and that's property and upscale property? Well, we are primarily uh, started as an upscale property, but we are in very uh, different price points now. We're into the luxury, uh, mid-level, affordable markets, and we are actually uh, catering to a vast uh, uh, majority of our population. Yeah, but who's buying at the moment? Is it uh, people living outside the Philippines predominantly, or they, is it internal demand? There is internal demand and also uh, a big market comes from our overseas Filipino workers abroad, which number about 11 million people. But uh, uh, recently, uh, we uh, experienced a lot of foreigners buying into the Philippines, considering that the Philippine property prices of even luxury uh, projects are about one-sixth the price uh, in Singapore, Hong Kong, Beijing, and Shanghai. So uh, there's a lot of motivation for uh, investors to come into the Philippines today and uh, obviously they are attracted to uh, projects which, which are familiar to them and these are the branded projects which are uh, we were doing today. Well, can all foreigners buy or is it uh, restricted? Uh, foreigners can buy up to the maximum of 40 percent of any residential condominium project and uh, therefore uh, they are most welcome, and uh, with the purchase, they get a, uh, a residency uh, uh, status with the Philippine uh, immigration. Right, but uh, tell me about supply and demand. There's uh, undersupply. Is there a chance that supply will meet demand, and what will that do to prices? Well, there is an undersupply situation right now because we see about 350,000 new households being formed every year. Uh, Metro Manila, for example, has a, a population of 12 million people, and uh, this is an emerging global city. And because of this, there's a lot of demand for new uh, home starters to buy their own homes. They move out of their parents' houses and they form their own. Uh, they buy their own homes, and because of the, um, the relatively uh, easy credit uh, today, they are attracted to uh, purchase their own homes. Uh, the equation is that uh, it's better to buy your own home uh, rather than rent because uh, the rental uh, amount uh, can take care of your monthly amortization. Right. Well, Joseph, so very quickly, is there, what's, what, what's the secondary market like? The secondary market uh, is uh, buoyant. Uh, there's also, uh, it's because there's a big market uh, of foreigners coming to the Philippines right now led by uh, the sector called business process as outsourcing, uh, which employs about a million people uh, as we speak today. So the secondary market uh, is uh, vibrant. Uh, there's a lot of exchange of, uh, of uh, transactions in, in this market, and we look uh, like it's going to continue to be very healthy. Uh, Joseph Antonio, thank you very much indeed from Century Properties there. And uh, just before we go, China's richest 